My name's Annie and I'm apprentice beekeeper number two at Bell House Apiary. I did a course back in Camley Street Garden near King's Cross about five years ago and have been looking ever since really for somewhere to keep a hive. I started volunteering as a gardener here at Bell House and it's such a beautiful garden. I thought beekeepers might be rather nerdy and isolated but actually they're a very friendly lot and um, you just learn a heck of a lot just by talking with people. Well my grandfather had bees in Preston in Lancashire when I was a little girl. Being around the bees I remembered the buzzing and the smell. There's an amazing smell of wax and bees. They have a special smell and I remembered the smell from when I was a child. Anyone that's a gardener or a, a multi acre farmer knows that their crops and flowers have to be pollinated. They say a third of pollination happens by bees. So, I mean, there's up to 20,000 sorts of bees in the UK, I understand. Honeybees are just one sort. They're the only sort that makes stores, that makes honey and stores it for the winter. But the pollination is absolutely vital. And apparently, already, there's been so many pesticides laid down that there aren't enough pollinators to pollinate the apple trees and the blossoms in this area of China. So they're using children and uh, light young people that don't break the trees to climb the trees and they're painting with a tiny paintbrush on the flowers to pollinate the flowers and this is already happening on the earth now. So it's pretty important that we start getting it right and be kind to bees and stop using pesticides and herbicides and in the degree that we are. Oh, there she is. There's the queen. Yeah, got the sticker on her back. She's got quite a long abdomen. Yeah. And she's about to reverse into a cell and lay an egg. I always thought when people talked about the queen bee that she was head of the hive and she made pheromones and they did as they were told. And it's really not like that. She's one out of the 60,000 because the queen, although vital, um, isn't, isn't in charge. And that was one of the first things I learned that I had absolutely no idea. I really thought it was a hierarchical thing with her at the top. I thought I'd be frightened about being among 60,000 bees flying around my head. And I surprised myself that I was able to keep calm and not even feel frightened. I felt quite safe in my suit and there's quite a movement to have bees on uh, rooftops. But actually it takes an awful lot of energy for a bee on the 25th floor of a tower block to fly down to collect its food and nectar from flowers at ground level. But there's lots of websites and British beekeepers and London beekeepers with lots of information about how and where to keep bees. Um, we're running courses at Bell House, or Philip is, um, day courses, where you can actually learn about what you have to do week to week to look after bees. I would say if you want to become a beekeeper, you need to do a few courses, read a few books, find a mentor in your local beekeeping association, someone that you can do beekeeping with for a, a season and see what it's like. I mean, you're giving an opportunity to a colony to survive. It's, you know, it's, it's significant on the planetary scale. I like being in the outdoors. I like being away from technology and trying to understand our place and the bees' place in the natural world. Um, it gives me a whole different perspective on my micro life. I mean, everything else that I do seems to be to do with phones or computers or money or and bees are completely nothing to do with all that. They're just doing what they do and they have what they've done for thousands of years.